I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and I'm here to teach you French. It means you like life, unlike me, because I hate everything. Different Gravy, not just another Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm one of the hosts, Richard Miller, and my co-host is this podcast, Raconteur par excellence, bringing the je ne sais quoi and joie de vivre to this particular au jus, Dr. Luke Gledall. How are you doing today, Luke? Oh, I'm good. I love bringing, bringing the au jus. Love getting that mm. dip. Are you, uh, are you, uh, the, do they, uh, <clears throat> in the UK, do they do a beef dip? Not really. Not, no. I mean... Obviously, gravy, gravy with chips at times. Mm. You know, depending on but where not, you are, in the- but not a sandwich. You're, you know, declared to dip into gravy. It really, ha- no, it doesn't really happen. It's, uh, it's a shame because I think a nation of gravy lovers. I think it could take off if, if it was, if it was sold to us in the right way. Well, thank you, Rich, and thank you, fellow listening nation of gravy lovers. <laughs> yes, welcome to another episode of Different Gravy. Oh, time, aren't we, Luke? let's uh, let's try and have some fun this week, everybody. <laughs> just just go out there and enjoy yourselves, okay? Yeah, you know the opposite of what Wednesday did second half versus Wickham today. <laughs> there you come with the sass, Luke. <laughs> but are you are you well, Luke? Outside of uh, outside of the the world of of Wednesday and their their football and travails. Other than that, yeah, I'm all right, yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, doing this episode with you, Rich, having a few smells and getting outside. Mm, a few smiles, a few smells. That's uh, that's different gravy in a nutshell. Uh, let's, let's, let's get ourselves onto an official news footing. Breaking hoo-hoos. It's breaking hoo-hoos. I'm the Fiona mm. Bruce of breaking hoo-hoos. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so there's obviously the big the midweek game to talk about. So we will we'll, mm. that we'll, we will cover that in detail um, uh, as part of our midweek news brief, uh, the game against Crew. And, and uh, not to make this out like it's some kids TV show, though I do wish somebody would send us in a birthday card for uh, for Darren Moore. That's right, mm. everybody. Everyone's uh, second favorite, Big Dave, from a Wednesday perspective. <laughs> no, it's going to do a long way to kind of displace uh, old Atty. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, it was his birthday, buff day yesterday on on Friday, the twenty second. Can you call to mind what 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 vintage of gentleman he is at this point now? I don't know, but I'm sure we could both look up look that up on Wikipedia. <laughs> scrambling, 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 editing down to save our Forty. faces. 48 years of age. 48 years old. Darren Mark Moore. And uh, celebrating his birthday on Earth Day. Hmm. Which is nice because we know in terms of watching the match, he likes to get close to the Earth. He likes to hunker down. He does. He was... The earth, smell was the grass. Asked about that in in uh, in, in the presser. And the, what's it? Is that, is it something to do with having piles? Or... I think it is. It's piles, yeah. He said, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I hope to get down, give a little scratch. Yeah. <laughs> what did did he explain? What the thinking behind it? He did, it? but it was so anodyne, I've forgotten. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's talk about crew midweek. You... I would have liked it if he just sort of, you know, because I, I I really remember. Um, I know uh, he's a character who we we differ in our opinions on, but uh, mm. one of the things that really endeared Andy Murray to me was he was on uh, Jonathan Ross's show. And asked because you know the players kind of like look at three balls and then take two away and kind of knock one back to the ball girls before they serve. Mm. And Jonathan Ross said, like, so what are you doing there? What are you looking for when you're checking? Which, you know, why do you get rid of that third ball? And Andy Moore's just like, I just kind of do it because everybody else does. And I, 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 it would be good. nice if Darren Moore just sort of said, Well, you know, let Pep Guardiola does it and it works for him. So <laughs> I mean, you kind of said it was, it was kind of like a moment of contemplation for him. Okay. Somehow, physiologically, it, it uh, taps into his brain to, 
get thinking about bringing Shadipo on or something. <laughs> ooh, spoilers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, spoilers. It was a shockingly bad substitution. Oh. We're, we're like the uh, we're like the Hamilton of podcasts. You know, the, uh, the Aaron Burr who shot him. You know, we'll <laughs> yeah. Bring that up from the off. Oh, do you know, we should do, that should be a summer special episode. We should wrap the whole, the entire episode in, in like the same kind of white boy rap of, uh, of Hamilton. That would be really funny. Yes, we will throw away our shots. <laughs> we will throw away our shots. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so the only bit of other news outside of the, the crew games, just to bring us onto a really like depressing footing, just from the off, mm. um, was the news that, that Dominic Iorfa, big, aka Big Dom, uh, aka the fastest man in Yorkshire, um, is is going nowhere anywhere anytime soon, and he's uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's out till the end of the season, unfortunately. Well, maybe he's the fastest man on a treatment table, maybe. He certainly seems to hop up. You'd expect he's had enough practice to hop up there pretty smart. Um, I imagine other boys are sort of looking around, seeing if there's some sort of pedestal to help them get on there. Mm-hmm. Up quick as a flash. I know I know this game. Well, wasn't there like a, didn't Bill Gates do a thing where he could like jump on a chair very impeccably? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm not sure aware of did. that. Okay. In bet- so that was that because he was drinking the blood of, infant children or it was that afterwards he thought i'm not as good at jumping on a chair as i'd like to be i, I believe the blood of infant children is kind of used as a treat for him oh like so, a little reward forget yeah. oh well done well done bill you got upon the chair have some have some uh infant blood oh wow okay <laughs> well it's, it's nice to know how that all works because sometimes you're like that sounds insane why would anybody believe that but then you look at it in a real world example and you're like, oh okay yeah, of course. Of course. You know how like Whiskers Temptations have a little gooey bit in the middle, so it's it's got the got the blood of a blood of a five year old in the middle of a crispy, crispy, delicious duck outer. Um, now, am I right in thinking he's out of contract? Not no, Bill Gates. Bill Gates is retired. <laughs> no, I think we, I think we've got all your for a year for for another uh, a year a year for. Oh. I thought I'd I thought I'd heard tell. That would that would be my, my terrible terrible uh, journalism. Iorfa gets another year offer. Yeah, you're right. He's got another year, hasn't he? So yeah, returning from injury, I offer signed a t- new two year deal keeping him at the club until the summer of twenty twenty three. So mm. we got a we got another year of him uh coming back, looking rusty and going, he'll be good when he gets back and then getting a knock and then not seeing him again for six months, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then and then he'll leave. So there we go. That's fun. Hmm. To anyway. Big Dom. Uh, yeah, so the game against Crew. Uh, it's interesting now because obviously it felt it felt so important and mm. such a kind of clear uh, banana skin type game. You know, it's typical of Wednesday to go into this sort of game and struggle. If there was there was um uh, Remarks made sort of linking this game to our win against Carlisle the last time we got promoted from League One and the same sort of just the feeling that maybe it wasn't our, our day, despite the fact we were very much on top and throwing the kitchen sink at it. Maybe the, the breakthrough was just never going to happen. Sort of fell into this game as well. Um, we rattled out the blocks, didn't we? We certainly did. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you, you know, Rich, I, I saw a, a funny tweet about someone who'd left a, um, a bag of ketamine in their hotel room and then came back to find that the um, the cleaner had had some, thinking it was cocaine, and found the cleaner kind of spaced out on his bed in, in oh. what I believe they call a K-hole. Oh. And, uh, m- maybe that was the explanation for the for the performance, for the opening chances from uh, Berahino. Maybe he was, he was it, it looked like he was clearly on something. Uh, I think that's a little harsh, but should we just go? Because this We're claim, the... claiming that he was on drugs because his finishing was so bad. <laughs> just before it was we just can... the fact that everything had such great scintillating impetus and build up, and then it just somehow like 
<laughs> like someone who's had a stroke. It was just somewhere that was lost in the blood flow up to the top two. Like Greg, I'll bring Gregory into this as well. Gregory was practically asleep for this game alongside Saido Berahino, who had two impeccably awful misses in the first 10 minutes. Should we just first, because uh, I'm conscious that I'm sat, I, I nearly said sat across from you, but that doesn't really work because there's um, there's several thousand miles separating us. Uh, mm. the, <laughs> That's true. Um, but in, in this virtual setting, I'm sat across from you. I'm sat across from a man who loves lineups. And <clears throat> this, was mm. an, this was an intriguing one before the game, I think, not many people would have picked this back three. Uh, <laughs> we ended up with a back three of Liam Palmer, uh, who was a central midfielder that became a right midfielder, that became a right back, that is now a centre back. He was right sided centre back. Jordan Story, who is an unconvincing man that stands alongside the centre back generally. And uh, Marvin Johnson, who is a, a winger that's now become a centre-back as well. Uh, right. So, yeah, an odd an odd partnership uh, at the back there, uh, especially with the presence of Lewis Gibson and Dunkley on the bench. Lewis Gibson was on the bench? Yes. Oh, A lesser-spotted Gibbo, Louis Gibbo. So that must mean he has a degree of fitness. Mm-hmm. Why, why are we not... Like, he hasn't played in the... And they, were, they had an under-23s game against QPR under twenty threes on Friday. I know that happened. And yeah. I know that uh so Adonir and Jaden Brown, I think Silla So got got some okay. minutes. So clearly they felt that and I think it's fine for someone like Jaden Brown who's probably gonna miss out from a you know, miss out on the eighteen on a regular basis. Nobody, nobody wants to see him play for us again, do they, at this point? Without yeah. Yeah. without something massive changing. Yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah, kind of further outside of that, you know. So it could be someone who misses out from a striker perspective. I mean, there's talk about as whether we will, you know, more more seems to go back into the treatment closet or maybe the cold storage, which we've got Josh Windass in and said we'll take a look at him. So maybe we might see Windass play again this season for Wednesday. But, you know, so he's kind of teetering around there. So I'm not surprised that he was there. But then Gibson missed out today just to, just to kind altogether of... from the squad, yeah. Altogether yeah. from the squad. So, like, what what is... I don't know what's, what's going on. It's it's really strange. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's odd. I mean, I, I was surprised to see Gibson there because I, we just haven't heard anything much about him in terms of his return. Um, mm. he's somebody who I'd like to see, see play more often than not given half the chance. I, I, I've not seen anything to dislike about him, really. I mean, he obviously had that weird hiccup uh, in his very first moment in a Wednesday shirt. But outside of that, he it's all been very impressive. He looks good in the air. He looks good with the ball at his feet. He seems to be a, even a bit of a threat going forward. Um, yeah, um, but there we go. Um that we didn't have Gibson playing. We had we had Palmer, Story, and Johnson. Um, Patterson joined the midfield uh, mm. there in, 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 instead of Delhi Bashiru. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, Hunt and Mendes Lang on the on, in the wing back positions. Gregory and Berahino up front, and, and Bailey Peacock Farrell in goal. Um, but that uh, it felt like almost immediately from the kickoff. I'm just sort of pulling up the the highlights to remind myself uh, just in the moment. But yeah, that Berahino chance felt so, so early doors. Um, mm. And it was an egregious miss. It was shocking, shocking stuff to miss this from, from a, a striker of any note, really a, a, a professional footballer, no less. I, I think it, it doesn't <laughs> being a striker makes it worse, uh, but you'd expect pretty much any player I would think to 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 tap that home given given that chance. It just looked so so straightforward. Bannon's played a beautiful ball out to Jack Hunt. Jack Hunt has controlled it and passed it in the one move. And all Berahino needs to do is just touch it towards the goal. It's an open goal. Yeah. And even if he leaves it, Gregory's in a in a similar position to just stroke it home as well. But he flicks it 
back across the goal, over the goalkeeper, over the goal and wide. It's just a disgraceful finish. And then, my, so my reading of that then is that he was in his head from that point on because he really shouldn't have missed that chance. And I think that the next chance he got, he was thinking, don't mess up, just take your time, be be calm and do it. And he was so, so then, as you say, so laid back, he's almost horizontal and ends up kind of dollying the ball into a very in a very easily clearable way at the, at the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, very frustrating. And I think that that those early chances though, the, the, you felt the team then get excited and the fans get excited. There was a feeling of this could be a, a steamroller type fill your boots game. Well, there was, you know, there was talk of that because it's, you know, it's a low lying already relegated team. It's an opportunity mm-hmm. to be at home with, Scoring a lot of goals, I um, believe, you know, certain poor, poor journalists who I don't know and I can't name because I can't remember them, would declare Hillsborough to be Goldsborough this season. Goldsborough, yes. You know, and certainly certainly very much a fortress in terms of points because uh, on the road, you know, another another critic who I'd never heard of, was it Ian Clark or Adrian Clark, who formerly of Arsenal apparently, declared Wednesday's away form to be bang average. Mm. Which, well, we'll get onto that, right? But uh, you know, yeah, yeah, no, definitely, this would be an opportunity to to really notch a few goals at home, and certainly, you know, an electric start, very dominant Sheffield Wednesday performance. It it just didn't seem to uh, people seem to forget their lines in the final third. Yeah, and I'm just looking, but yeah, Bias had a very nice chance. Um, I think that I think partly their keeper did okay at times. You know, I think anything that wasn't he was taking some beating, you know. It wasn't going to be. A, it wasn't just a, a shot on goal that would that would do the trick. It had to be something a bit different. Um, and awful lot of instantaneous time wasting. I don't really understand the mentality of time wasting from minute one. We they actually did get a yellow card for time wasting in the during the first half in this game. Crew, uh, they're already relegated, yeah. so they. I mean, how how lowly are your ambitions that your hope is to come and sneak a draw at a ground and like, that would be your, your big victory? I mean, from that perspective, I mean, they're already relegated. I guess it's especially for crew who seem to be a bit of a, a League One, League Two yo-yo team in kind of recent history. Um, maybe this is just a big, big fun day out for the fans and maybe you're just mm-hmm. trying to go and just bloody a few noses, maybe. Oh, and what fans... Um, <laughs> such a huge crowd had made their way from Cheshire. How how many do you estimate? How many how many buses do you estimate? What's that thing that they say about? Is it three men and their dog? Mm. Yeah, that uh, they could have fit in a minibus. I think at a, at a push, they could have all fit in one minibus. They could have fit in a um, a, a family SUV and had a and had a, a chair spare for all the coats. I think. <laughs> Martin, have you taken your coat off yet? Might as well. We've got we've got a spare seat. <laughs> Pop your coat off. A seat for the coats. A seat for the coats. A lovely day out at Hillsborough. <laughs> mm. uh, but it, it's after that initial flurry, we seem to sort of lose a bit of head of steam. We lost a bit mm. of faith in ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think Crew even managed to have a chance or two. Uh, I may be remembering that wrong, but I, I think I seem to remember that maybe happening. Do you, would you do you remember? Do you share that memory? I imagine it must have happened. Yeah, Tuesday Tuesday <laughs> feels a very long time ago in terms of this game. The only kind of big note I want to say from that first half was, you know, outside of a flurry of missed chances from. I mean, there's even one with Gregory where I think he kind of protested he was pushed. Yeah. And um, it seemed very soft. It seemed like he was very protesting. For someone who seems to have the level of shithousery and strength of Lee Gregory, yes. it yeah. was very surprising to see that. Selective strength. Yeah. To, uh, and be able- uh, outside of that, the only thing I kind of want to talk about was I clearly thought it was a penalty on Patterson at the stroke of half time. Yes. Yeah. He looked to be wrestled over didn't he uh, very was, much uh, so yeah that yeah that move with gregory 
being pushed. Um, that was a good header across by by uh, Patterson, to be fair. Um, and it probably would have fell for Berahino. Now, obviously, that's not a bet your house on it. He wasn't having that sort of game. <laughs> but yeah. all he succeeded in doing was taking it taking it off the toes of Berahino. Yeah, I'm wondering if I can see that again, because I only saw it live. So I actually made a rare a rare jaunt out to a midweek game, which uh, doesn't get to happen too often. Um, I, I watched it firsthand and then also watched it back and kind of verified that it should have been a pen. Should have absolutely been a pen. Yeah, it, yeah. It looked, it looked, at, it, it looked, it looked clear as day seeing it live. Um, well, we've had some interesting refereeing decisions these last couple of games. If if that's the case, mm-hmm. uh, I think that that becomes a bit of the tale of of uh, the Wickham game as well. Uh, but th- but I, I just to claim my Nostra Nostra Domas. Uh, title i did text you at half time and say it might take a penalty to uh to get this one rolling because it was just starting to feel like we were running out of ideas and we were rushing things um just to provide a little bit of a deeper analysis than just purely sort of ticking through the events of the game um i think this mix in midfield didn't work by and large uh so despite the, the misgivings about the defense i think the defense did were broadly fine um but that trio was dysfunctional um because patterson is there and he's a forward by trade supposedly kind of he naturally becomes the focal head of the three in midfield which is almost all of our success of late has been bannon being that three and we even very much so yeah being a third striker at times or mm-hmm. well, Patterson was doing that instead of Bannon Bannon was still trying to exert the same influence but he was doing it from deeper in the field and he was pushed he was forcing things and giving the ball away um and just not being able to have the same sphere of influence so I think I think we I shared a kind of hot take earlier in the season that maybe maybe Bannon being forward is not the is not the kind of answer to things I think I've absolutely been proven wrong in that but I think this game showed maybe the problem prior to his rich vein of form was that he wasn't properly being utilised up front. Like he should just be a member of the the three attackers, not somebody who's a, a midfielder first and an attacker later. That seems to bring out the best in him is not giving him any of those defensive responsibilities. And with, with Luongo and Byers playing in behind him, he can just forget about that by and large and let those two look after the other stuff. What happened here was Byers was trying to sit deep. Bannon was sitting really deep and he was almost getting back into kind of quarterback territory, sitting on top of the centre-backs. Um, and it was just hampering the whole thing. And we weren't getting enough out of Patterson being the man leading the charge to justify it for my, for my money, really. Yeah. Uh, so all told, that's I think that's where it was all kind of falling down a little bit. Although we were comfortably better than a very poor, already relegated crew side. Um, we were sort of lucky to get away with such a such a poor kind of formation and team choice. Um, but I mean, but we did get away with it. We did, and I, I mean, in terms of kind of rotation, like I, I feel I can maybe kind of defend this one because I think mm. even though looking at the team sheet and being frustrated with some of the choices that we're seeing, um, mm. maybe it is an occasion for... It is a midweek occasion for a bit of a shuffle and a bit of change from things, and that there hopefully should be enough strength to get us a three points. And you know, oh, look, yeah, yeah. Luckily, luckily it worked. I'd say this was the game to gamble on. Definitely, mm. it's uh, yeah. It, like we we saw even at the top end of things, Liverpool sort of did that with their Champions League tie. They played kind of a close to a second string team so that they could play their full-strength team fully fit against Man City at the weekend. It's fine. People have to make those choices. But um, I just, yeah, just to kind of explain, I think what was behind it just not quite quite working in that way was was uh, was the fact that we, we've taken our best asset, which is Bannon, and we're asking him to influence the game from much deeper in the field, and it just wasn't working. Um, and, that's, and that's our birthday present to uh, to Darren Moore is uh, giving you a very over generous comparison with Liverpool Football Club. <laughs> that's Pep and Klopp. He's been compared to this episode, so there you go. All right for some, uh, 
but w- finally we did so the second half we didn't have as many chances it was it was a it, we were well and truly into kind of slog territory i think sec- come second half uh would you agree with that i i would say so yeah um but we did thankfully we did manage to carve ourselves a breakthrough uh from the uh yeah, as if coming out of the cheshire salt mines with uh, with a a seam of goal um <laughs> we uh we had a bit, so we had a bit of an overlap. Marvin Johnson. It was quite fun to see Marvin Johnson playing playing centre back in inverted commas in the way that he played it in this game because he was very very rarely defending and he was nearly always all the way up that wing. Um, and he decided to go on a run inside of Nathaniel Mendes Lang, the, the wing back. Um, Bannon took a little while to find him, and I think by the time the ball came across, he was actually offside. And thankfully, Mendes Lang was strong enough and <laughs> uh, loud enough to make him leave it and took possession of the ball in in the uh, in the sort of um, by the corner flag and pushed towards the goal and uh, cl- rather clumsily he he pushed the pushes the ball past his his, his man I'm trying to figure out who it was 36 is the man 36 is just completely caught out by the movement uh, I will find his name now or I won't Oh, Casquette, Casquette. Mm-hmm. He, uh, yeah, he's completely caught out by the movement. He should have been marking Johnson. He didn't quite do that. He then is rushing to catch up with Mendes Lang to kind of make up. And in so many ways, this happens so often, a spiral of like one mistake begets another mistake in a series of mistakes. And uh, in this case, what he does is just sort of lump into Mendes Lang just as he makes his way into the box. And uh, and we win the penalty. Uh did you know who? Did you know Gregory was supposed to be the corner, the penalty kick taker? Now, well, I was wondering just because um, Bannon missed the last one he took. I think. Yeah, I think Bannon's missed maybe two in a row, possibly. Oh dear, that's not good. Um, I was just going to say. Well, I mean, Gregory was before before he had a spell of injury, right? Mm. We kind of agreed that Gregory. So I was wondering whether Gregory would step up to take it when you know, you know, just after the decision was awarded and he did um their, their goalkeeper uh a real pill um bit of a bit of a douchebag all game long lots of time wasting lots of i think he needed treatment for a supposed injury twice uh to help to aid with his time wasting and uh really made a big song and dance on the goal line lots of wobbly arm shenanigans to try and put Gregory off he also kind of talked at the referee to the point where he got a yellow card for it which just served to delay the taking of the kick so as a, as a, as a fan in the ground in the ground and, and at home and I would only presume as a player on the pitch um, the tension level just gets ratcheted up and ratcheted up more and more but thankfully Gregory absolutely kept his cool sent the keeper the wrong way and just uh, calmly slotted it home. Great both for the, Both goals for the season, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, I mean, really, that was pretty much it in terms of the game. It wasn't a huge <laughs> amount that happened after that. No, no, that's it. And then pretty much, I think, even kind of Wednesday substitutions seem to kind of ease off. And, you know, we start to mm-hmm. bring on other defenders just to see the game out. And it's like, we did enough. bring on Dunkley for fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but... Even he couldn't couldn't spoil things on this day. Not on this occasion, no. So the feeling coming away was fairly euphoric. I think I, I think prior to the MK Dons game, we probably all collectively felt that automatic promotions were not uh, was something that just absolutely wasn't on the cards. Um, we're a good shout for playoffs, but uh, I think the win against MK Dons and coming through this test uh, which ended proved to be fairly tricky start you'd start looking up you start thinking about the possibilities how how crazy is it just this general season with uh, the kind of roller coaster nature and looking at looking at the points table which is just insane how competitive and high quality in terms of points this league is yeah. it's yeah. it is just absolutely ridiculous and a huge kudos to this league 
you know, below the League of the Championship, which people seem to think is the best second tier division in the world, mm. which is having a very, very bad season. Yes. In that terms, it's it's poor. It's exceptionally, exceptionally poor. Um like to look at that, I mean it I guess it maybe speaks to the narrative that this was crazy enough for to think as a Wednesday fan to think, um, you know, look at this. We we have a shot, like it seemed a very brief window of is is there a potential of a possibility of even sneaking that second place? Well, I think it was somebody again, somebody on our talk, apologies for not giving them proper due credit, but they they'd sort of summarized it very nicely to just sort of say if we win all the rest of our games mk dons go into that last game knowing they need to win to keep themselves above us and if rotherham drop points between now and the end of the season they're in the same position uh so it suddenly that suddenly made it feel very possible uh that didn't seem like an outlandish series of events to happen um unfortunately We've mm-hmm. got another game to talk about in this episode, Luke. And uh, good old Wednesday, making you feel foolhardy forever, believing in them, having any hope, um, trying to have some joy in your life. Uh, they laughingly come along and snuff it out like wee Willy Winky. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> in his in his dressing gun. Uh, that's what he did, wasn't it? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Any po- any more post match uh, crew thoughts before we? No, I, I mean it was you know we we did what was asked, so it was you know the business end of the season, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, professional results, professional players getting it. You know we needed we needed a bit of help from the referee. Um, it's disappointing. It's disappointing that we didn't capitalize on the other chances. Mm. It's especially nice for those. What I think is a very settled striking partnership. I mean, there's, there's changes, defense is all over the place. Midfield seems to get tweaked out for a couple of reasons, including you know some injury and some some niggles, um, but also just purely because hey, we've got Darren Moore as manager and we're rotating yes. things. <clears throat> and I guess also in defense, it's a long season and we have a lot of old pros who are injury prone. And it was Sheffield Wednesday. We get tons of injuries, etc., etc., etc. So, but I mean, we did it. We did it. We got the three points. It wasn't a glamorous game of football. Um, it was good. It was nice to see. Um, it was nice to see Mendes Lang played on the wing. I thought he did very well. For he yes. was a, a, a kind of a positive from this. You know, again, we can say that that midfield combination. We got away with a defensive change. Going back to some stuff that we saw before, which wasn't working very well. Mm-hmm. I mean, effectively, you're looking at that and you're saying, if Hutch is fit, we could have gone Hutch, Palmer, Johnson. And that was almost probably the most steadfast in terms of formation back three that we've used. That's probably the oh, no, that's fair the enough. most stuck with combination. Yeah, hilariously, it's just one we don't ever want to see because we were doing that when you know, just having a real tirade of Iorfa being out, being injured, Dunkley being injured. Um, And then that was prior to having any other further options, like before we we managed to bring in Story and Dean. So maybe that's hilariously, you know, close to like the most. And I I mean, I also is just including the centre-back prowess of Palmer and Johnson, which seemed to do a lot more kind of going forward. I think maybe in a way, I mean, to look at that, and then to also say the leading man in the middle of the pack is Jordan Story, mm. which is worrying. It's just, it's just very, very worrying. Um, maybe we can absolutely have a bit of gratitude that we've got through so many games with that back three in a very injury-prone season. I yeah. mean, the end of this, I will definitely kind of point the finger at the recruitment to say we're going to play three centre backs, and when we didn't bring in at least one more centre back for that first half of the season, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, saying that, I think one of the things that I think I'm quite comfortable, especially with Johnson, who had a very bad start at Wednesday, very unconvincing start. Even though some of his crossing was good, I felt it it put him in a position for him to get going and to get those minutes in a weird way. It did, yeah. So yeah. I think we have to have a bit of gratitude about that. Well, I. I... <sighs> It was unconventional, but it but it worked. I think that's uh, mm. that's undoubted. It was more by happenstance than any 
grand formulation, I think, or or kind of out of desperation rather than any uh, any grand plan. But still, it's uh, that that worked well. And and to be honest, it's been better than some of our defenses when it's been all centre backs. They performed better because I think in some ways the gifts complement themselves to the, the, complement each other a bit more. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know I'm I, apologies I'm getting on for being a bit of a broken record but I, I, there was a couple of I, story never quite got a hold of Mandarin in this game and I, I do I don't think I don't want to see him in the middle of that three I don't think he's good enough for the responsibility um hopefully it won't, won't come up again between now and the end of the season I think he's okay alongside a commanding other center back he's okay as a kind of backup extra yeah, um, yeah, yeah he, I don't think he's got it to lead the line himself. And he's a young man, so maybe it's unfair to expect him to. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we rattle headlong uh, into head-to-head, putting uh, crouching Darren Moore uh, up against the rock and roller, rock and roller, rockabilly, uh, Gareth Ainsworth. Wild Fang. Has... Wild Fang with his... Oh, do you like doing your shirt buttons up, do you? Oh, I'm not a square like you. Gareth Ainsworth, kicking against the pricks. Um, including including maybe Tom Hiddleston's worst performance as a young Bill Nye, perhaps. <laughs> Very kind of odd, depressing love child energy between the two of them. Yes. Um, interestingly, there was a bit of... So I was on the, uh, I was on the old... The old grotty stream, Luke. You know I was. So I got the Wickham commentary. Um, <laughs> they seem to enjoy Rich. Rich doing his Johnny Depp impression from recent times. <laughs> oh dear. Well, Luke, we're staying away from certain <laughs> subjects. He's a very problematic figure. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, interestingly, they were sort of laughing uh, and very much enjoying the fact that uh, at Wickham Wanderers under Mr. Ainsworth, they have become connoisseurs of of some s housery, some uh, time wasting, and uh, and uh, such such antics. Uh, and I believe Stockdale is is maybe chief amongst the uh, the proprietors of of such antics. Uh, but it was just interesting. I, I just sort of it reminded me a little bit hearing them chuckle about their reputation and kind of relishing in it. Did remind me of when we were managed by Megson and just kind of learning to love being being called bullies every week and just laughing as we we took the spoils and they were left mm. licking their wounds. Um, yeah, in, in, just in, uh, just a bit of note, an interesting bit of note. Uh, so, in terms of lineups, Luke loves Lukey, Lukey, Lukey loves lineups. Do you want to run us through this one? So, I, I guess from the interesting thing was kind of in the preamble to this. I, I think some fans on social media and possibly Alex Talk, and I apologise if I can't identify exactly who has said this, but somebody did say, and I'm sure others have said this. Wondered whether Dunkley would play because of Vokes and Nakin Fenwa and the fact that basically it seems to be very made out that Wickham are a bunch of dotted yes. buggers. Um, long, long ball merchants to a man. Rock and roll football, as they will often protest. Mm. In, uh, you know, you know the, the place which the birthplace of James Corden, you know, is uh, the home of rock and roll football. So I, I guess if you deem carpool karaoke as rock and roll, then nothing more rock and roll than pretending that you have to uh, have a carpool in LA and to get to the to get to his office in the studio, he has to incorporate Camilla Cabello or someone along those lines. <laughs> if, if that if if that is, then yeah, rock on, rock rock on, rock on, chair boys. <laughs> you get up off those chairs, chair boys, and haul them the- around. Do you feel, in a way, they are sort of the James Corden of the football league? I think that's a little bit harsh, but maybe, but maybe still, maybe the thing that would link them, in my view, Rich, is I'm going to give Wickham Wanderers a kicking uh, in this episode on <laughs> a few occasions because, uh, much like James Corden, it's fun to give James Corden a sport kicking. Mm. In a week, I saw the clip of him telling 
uh, Courtney Kardashian that you've just got to ignore the haters. Um, probably good advice coming from James Corden because he comes under a barrage of hate for every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, in terms of lineup, um, it seems like, you know, those fans were correct. That's what we did. Moore loves his horses for courses, maybe more so than the regularly settled defensive lineup. But here's what we have. I was heartbroken that Hunt was missing completely. I, I think looking back, that might be that might be one of my things I would have done differently in his position. I just think mm. Hunt... Oh, well, do you, do you think he must? Do you think he must be injured? I mean, we're doing this podcast. Um, we are approximately it's about twenty five no, no, no. minutes past six uh, GMT. I've just been checking while we've been chatting. I've not seen uh, an interview with Darren Moore kind of post match, and I usually check, you know, Yorkshire Live, The Examiner. I'm yet to yet to see what's what's going on there because. Yeah, because he's not even in the. He wasn't even on the bench, was he? No, there was there was no there was no Jacunt. So he, he wasn't mentioned in the preamble, and but they were seemingly saying I think there's a, a glib note from Dom House and that every first team available for Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, he's listed them, but then he's not kind of come back. And as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any kind of interview with Darren Moore. At least he hasn't. Yeah. So no explanation as to where he is today. So uh, that was sad. I mean, it's it's good to see. It was good to see Johnson uh, given back to his rightful position. I thought it was nice seeing Mendes Lang keep his wing berth. That is Mendes good. Lang's better as do you think he's better as an inside out wing back or or um, on his sort of orthodox wing in this way? Johnson absolutely is better on the left because he's he, he's so good at crossing. Mm. I think want him to do that all the time but yeah Mendes Lang I, I'm not entirely sure he just you just want that pace and you just want him surging down the wing really yeah. and a, a couple of occasions today you know he did have that breakout pace and did go on the counter he did but that was something um you know I said hopefully he picks up a decent spree after midweek no buyers um but it's good to see the rotation good to see Deli Bashuru kind of restored because he did really earn um yeah, uh, a second game after playing so well against MK Dons last week. He was week. unlucky to miss out against Crew, mm. wasn't he? And just I just said, yeah, we're really doubling down the physicality. Though even that, I mean, maybe we would have brought on. I don't know. Like, wondered whether they would have just played Patterson. I mean, at that point, I think there's any there's no real gel and cohesiveness to that midfield three. But oh. I don't know. I just it seemed very singular with the idea of what. Darren Moore was trying to do today. Uh, Dean's on the bench. Holly nice. Dean's back on the bench. That was good to see. But again, maybe it's just a random uh, personal appearance, a bit like Lewis Gibson, because I mean, he didn't get on. So, and interestingly, Render on the bench instead of Wildsmith today. I know well. it's that too. No Wildsmith. Yeah. Um, do you reckon that's uh, due to injury, or do you reckon maybe it was a few weeks ago that his his wife was supposed to give birth, right? His partner. Yeah. Because there was some talk about that. Uh, and we're still waiting to see whether we see Windass. You know, Windass is not there. We've got Canberry and we have Patterson. Yeah. Mm. Um, but, I mean, I've got to say, we talked about starting starting strong against Crew. Obviously, this is much stronger opposition. But we we really did a good job of kind of smothering them early door I think we uh, early doors I think we had our press really working well I thought we had our shape really strong um I, I've I've got sort of several notes from the first little spell there uh but the first thing I, I did note down that I absolutely loved was there was a Bailey a long sort of kick from Bailey Peacock Farrell mm. that kind of bounced over everybody uh, this is sort of two minutes in mm-hmm. and looking to go just be nothing pointless. And uh, Gregory just worked so hard, uh, managed to get himself between the, their defender who was walking the ball out and, and the byline and cannon the ball off him to win a corner, which I just absolutely loved. I love his, his real gift is not giving up in those situations and asking another question of a, of a defence and a defender. Like, he just doesn't let you off the hook easily. He's not 
there's no kind of it, to kind of liken it to um, a kind of fight sport sort of thing. There's no kind of fainting. It's all just asking the question again. He's just, just he's just going to land another jab and just see how you deal with that. He's just going to do something else um, and ask another question of you, uh, which is yeah, it's a great trait to have. I, I do love that 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 uh, that never say die attitude that's built into his game, mm-hmm. and it's incredible at his age to kind of he just never seems to stop charging around and running and annoying people <laughs> so um that was nice to see him doing that straight away um we did then have our first poor set piece and and i think one of the themes of the day was not not we had we had double figures corners and single i mean you're talking one or two good ones out of all of those there was lots that hit the front post and ban it was bannon and mendes lang who were guilty for for that um, and the, yeah, the first one of those happened <laughs> happened in the first two three minutes. Well, uh, this was something funny. So I got a text from my brother, kind of early week. He said, "Listen to the pod." I think he said, "If I recall correctly, on average, teams score one goal per twenty corners, which is why you think the best teams in the league are useless." Right. So I mean, it's interesting. I mean, we come from different generations that football changes. But I remember talking to my dad, and my dad would say, "You know, when I was young, Luke, you know." we would always have a chant of being like a corner is a goal. Like yeah. it was seen as such an aggressive opportunity of a set piece. Um, saying that though, I mean, the corners were bad today. Yeah. Why didn't, why didn't we, we see a similar period again, speaking of Megson, I think we've mm. lived through a similar period when we had uh, Raider Johnson and um, Rob Jones. Yeah. Rob Jones. Uh, that was, we must have had, had got Way more than a quarter of our goals that season from 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 corner kicks. Yeah, uh, it just exactly. felt like every time we got a corner, it was a it was as good, almost as good as a penalty. Chris Chris Lines's impeccably floaty corners, right? Floaty corners, but big strong men that are happy to go and go and win the battle for them. It's a nice combination. Mm-hmm. I think the problem with Bannon's corners is you just don't know where they're going to go. He hits the front man. I, I know we're saying problem when we know when we we've, we know it's statistically proven we've got more goals from corners than any other team in this league. So okay, that's the caveat. Well, well <laughs> we can get onto it, but we should have had another one. Um, we should have absolutely. Um, but I also wondered, for the sake of corners, the thing I want to bring up was I'm, I'm just thinking now. Like I, I think I've really enjoyed seeing Mendes Lang take corners. Or at least basically just like not all corners are taken by Barry Bannon. I mean, we've come recently. I mean, last week we scored two goals from corners, which were both taken from Barry Bannon. So maybe there's still a thing to... But it's it's been a lot of trying and a lot of failure before we got to the point of success, in my view. I also think Dunkley kind of breaks how we take corners. Sometimes for the better, because obviously mm. we will talk about the one that we did get in the back of the net today. Um but it, I think Bannon's then, it, it becomes almost a route one thing of get it to the back stick for Dunkley to go and have a fight for it. Uh, but unfortunately, he hit the front man. They, they were counting, basically, on, on their commentary, they were saying just how poor our corners were, had been. And I, I, th- I think overall, over the piece of the, you know, in, in terms of the season, you can't argue with the, the, the efficacy of Barry Bannon, corner taker. But Mendes Lang, his first three hit the front man. And Barry Bannon hit the front man with, I think, three out of five, um, which is just... Oh, so good. Mendes Lang did take corners and I just missed them completely. Is that what you're saying? Mendes Lang took two corners. Oh, okay. The first two corners oh, yeah. went straight to the front man. Well, I remember, like, historically, Mendes Lang did take some decent corners. He, he has done, yeah. yeah. But um, he just didn't have his eye in today for whatever reason. Hmm. Um we go for in swinging on both sides, don't we? If we can, we try and have a right footer on on the right hand on the, yeah, curling it in, hmm. and, and Barry Bannon doing the same. Uh, but we, yeah, we had we had sort of a lot of this didn't amount to much, and I think when we get to the half time, it's a very familiar feeling of we've been here before in games. But just to kind of run through the incidents as they happened, I, I, I noted down the fourth minute. We had some nice possession in front of the Wickham box, and then we had a uh, had a nice shot from Luongo that went just mm-hmm, wide. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we had Mendes Lang rattle rattle the net support after a, a, another sort of shot from from distance that looked really close. I think a few fans thought that might have gone in because it it rippled the net. Mm. <laughs> 
Just in between there, Rich, is just a completely small note I said. Uh, do you think this is possibly a record I think I've seen within football? We counter an offside decision by launching it forward to Gregory, who is offside. Maybe the quickest offside to offside decision ever. <laughs> I didn't pick up on that, but you might well be right. Yeah, that does sound uh, sounds like poor planning on our part in terms of rushing our, our free kick. Mm-hmm. And then I think after after that really fantastic hit from Mendes Lang, absolutely mullied it just over. Some great control and run in there mm. we saw. Probably brings us to um, one of the first moments of contentiousness yeah. within this game of football. First off, just it's worth noting, uh, lovely work from Delhi Bashiru to win the corner in the first place. He's uh, mm. There were several shining moments of him pushing his way past a man or two and and really causing some havoc. I I'm I'm a fan. I want to I want to see him allowed to do what he does really well again and again. I think it would not be a bad tactic at any point for us to just lean on his seemingly unique ability in our squad to just push past that first man and kind of open open things up a bit for us. Um maybe his decision making lets him down at times once he gets out there, but this was this was the first of several good uh little Glimpses from from Delhi Bashiru again, who uh, I thought had a good, a fine performance all round. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll well, I'll, I'll I'll talk through my note and then we can discuss the incident. But a floaty a floaty Bannon cross results in an isolated duo of Dunkley and Farino. They collapse in each other's arms, but De- but Dunkley has the wherewithal to poke out a leg and steer the ball home. Uh, but the ref rather harshly gives the foul to Wickham, ruling out the goal. It was clearly a foul on Dunkley. Yep. The Wickham player has no idea where the ball is. He is just trying to man- manage Dunkley and gets it wrong. Yeah. He he, ta- he tackles him to the ground. Yeah. Like Greco-Roman wrestling. It's well, not- I, well, I was just thinking just in the same way, it's like both are, both as bad as each other. Surely that nullifies itself out. At, like, at worst, it's both as bad as each other. At I think worst, it's, it's both as bad as foul the other way. But at, 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 you know the best case scenario for the Wickham player but, is. But we the the nature of this, and it's like I'm not suggesting that some of the frustrating thing that comes with watching football is in some of these situations, and because we don't have the big boy toys of the top tier of English football, yeah. like we will never know what it was disallowed for, unless actually more kind of tells us afterwards, unless yeah. they ask or, or players will ask the referee, what did you disallow that goal for? Um, because it didn't, unless it's something in the middle, which is probably that he was looking at, but it looked like he was looking specifically, he was very close to the action. Oh yeah. Yeah. And even look even watching it back, you can see him looking cause you know, there's just this, I don't know, Wickham seemed to have this protection spell or perhaps have have paid off this referee. Cause frankly, there's just, there's a lot of shit or non-decisions given in this game of football and it's ridiculous. Yeah. This Dunkley, was, Dunkley did really, really well in that situation to get a foot to it, and I don't know how we, I don't know how him and us and Sheffield Wednesday are penalised because, unfortunately, once again, as we've had so many times in this game, this is a game where probably we did well enough to beat Wickham, but not well enough to beat Wickham and the referee and his yeah. opportunity decision yeah. making. Yeah, because um, that's unfortunately what you have to do more often than not in this league is work your way through the worst of officiating. And supposedly he's a championship ref. They were talking about his record of giving out lots of yellow cards. Um, <laughs> That's hilarious. Most of the season uh, at, at championship level. So supposedly he's a he's a cut above where we are. But uh, well, I, I, I don't want to jump ahead too much. And sorry, I know we, we kind of peel through the moments, but can we just take a moment to look at the fact that Jacobson was ignored for two very bad decisions after Dunkley gets a yellow yeah. and Dunkley's yellow is like, yeah, that's probably a yellow. But then seemingly nothing else that Wickham did was anywhere near deemed yeah. to be anywhere near as severe as that. Jacobson has two very clear yellow card opportunities turned down one after another where he gets away with the first one yeah. and then seemingly gets a yellow for no reason later on in the game. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't understand what the, the thing that got him a yellow in the end eventually did because there was no explanation for it no i mean you should have had a yellow earlier but uh, <laughs> less like oh so he got his yellow card 
it was a very clear yellow card, to be fair, actually. Um, in that move, if you remember, so we're, we're jumping a whole like, mm. hour ahead of ourselves here, but um, in that move, if you remember, um, Delhi Bashiri played it into Mendes Lang, who played a pass but was completely smashed from behind. Oh, okay. And it's got a yellow card for that. The ref then, when the when the move broke down, went back and yellow carded him. So he okay. was a very clear and deserved. But at that point, maybe that should have been him off, or or he should have already had the yellow, which means he's not allowed to make the big horrible tackle that he made. A bit um, like a kind of darling decision from the other week. Yeah, darling, yeah. who darling who scored today? Premier Dance the first really? one. Really? Yeah. So there we go. Um, I yeah, I thought Dunkley's foul was uh, was egregious and and deserved a, a yellow. Yeah, uh, but it just didn't say anything. We kind of lost our heads after that moment. I think we there was a we'd been very much on top. We'd been controlling them, and then I think we let it get to us. The kind of adrenaline of scoring and then having it taken away seemed to affect us worse than them. And one of the things that happened was. For the first time, Dunkley felt a bit exposed, and his rea- his knee jerk reaction to that is just to foul the nearest warm body, and uh, that earned him a yellow card that I thought I thought was absolutely fair enough. He was he was pretty late. That's fair. I mean, yeah, there is a real burst of early kind of pressure and dominance in this game, and it does it does kind of eke out when I'm looking back at my notes and thinking about the game. We Following didn't get that, o- we didn't get over that disappointment, did we? Not really. I don't think. No, we we sort of. We kept playing, but I think it, I think everything slumped a little bit. We're back to that old thing that makes you laugh, the adrenaline dump, maybe, Luke. <laughs> well, I thought uh, that was going to be my note from one thing I didn't tell you about crew. I said, you know, uh, <laughs> just the crew game. In the act of acting, there's a tradition called corpsing, where laugh, uh, actors laugh during the performance. The crew performance in the first half was kind of the same, only instead of laughing, we fill our underpants at that pivotal moment. <laughs> <laughs> but that that was from Cruz, sorry. So it's not what we're talking yeah. about here. It's just about Wickham. Um, they probably had their first good chance of the game, as a, not straight from that free kick, but they they we had a McCleary cross mm. um, following the clearance, and and that produced a, a pretty. It was a say a, a fairly comfortable save, but it was a smart save from from Bailey Peacock Farrell, and he needed to make sure he ha- kept hold of it. So thankfully, he did he did just that. Um, 22 minutes, we had another great surging run from Delhi Bashiru causing Wickham kittens, but his shoss was defended well at the near post. We then had a sort of spell of pressure. We had several corners back to back in that point, but it didn't really amount to anything in terms of shots on goal, unfortunately. It was just kind of nearly moments, lots of nearly moments. That's a lot of that in this mm. this game in terms of our attacking. Um 26 minutes, Gregory shot from distance, easily saved after a bit of an interchange where him and Pannon tackled each other on the edge of their box. Uh, they both had different ideas about where they wanted the ball to go, uh, but, but Gregory won and uh, got his shot away. Um, 29th minute, I've got a succession of mini sniffs as Bannon, Berahino and finally Johnson all seem to have a glimpse at goal within the box. Closed down well on each occasion and it only amounts to a corner. Uh, Mendes Lang takes a second stinker of a corner in the row as he puts it straight into the nearest man. <laughs> um, and then I've got my last note of the half. I don't know if you've got anything else to fill in that gap. There's about, half, there's about 15 minutes. Uh, there was... 26 minutes, I thought there was uh, FDB of an amazing show of strength to bounce off a player following build, uh, building the ball out from the back from BPF. Does so well to drive the ball forward. Yeah. Um, was that the one where Mendes Lang sort of sold him short a little bit on the, and he had to do a lot to keep possession and he just absolutely trounced the guy? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely fairly, but he just good. left him in a heap. It was really lovely. 32nd minute for was an absolute beautiful moment from Wickham. They're trying to ping a roll around quickly and artfully play it around themselves. Comes to one of the midfielders who just laces it out of play beautifully. Fantastic. <laughs> it's rock and roll. Rock and roll football. Right. And it's probably that last minute. It's probably the last minute of half time, I think. Um, 34th minute, actually, I mentioned. Actually, Peacock Farrell does some mild heroics to come out and juggle the ball and clear the ball downfield. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to say, he looks commanding and confident today. I thought, thought he had a really good game. They were really mm. impressed with his kicking all game as well. I think at one point they were like, they just couldn't believe he'd 
cleared the ball quite so far upfield effortlessly because he's got such good technique in his kicking that it doesn't mm-hmm. he doesn't have to hit it look like he's working hard to hit it really far. <laughs> um, which I know is not the biggest skill uh, in in modern football, but it, it's nice when you're able to do it. It means you can disguise things. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good half of football from from uh, Bailey. Good old Bailey doing his bit, <laughs> like the Boy Scout that he always has been, always will be. Um, <laughs> we did have a little bit of a. Lapse in com- concentration, uh, and we let a beater in to uh, to to run clear on that on that um, on our right hand side. Um, we did recover fairly well, but it meant that McCleary was in a position. He's there. He's one of their real danger. I mean, a beater and McCleary are both dangerous players, uh, but McCleary seems to be the one that really gets the fans off their off their chairs at at, uh, at the old Wickham Wanderers Stadium. Um, and he was he was but he was sort of running and looking for an opening for a shot and got a pretty decent effort away but he missed missed the target thankfully but uh, one probably that was Wickham's best chance of the game I would say to that point um, and half time followed not not too long afterwards yeah yeah I think that just about covers it was a disappointment from that break at half time you know I thought oh this is going to be really good and then it just completely ran out of energy and uh, dominant without bothering the goal. Apart from a goal we should have had. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, an all too all too familiar kind of half time feeling. And I mean, that's really all I can really say about it. And then the only thing I want to say was coming into that second half, it starts bringing in for some reason I just felt if if you if anyone's had any kind of mental health issues and ever felt any moments of panic or what I I think I attribute as doom, I felt this very feeling of doom when the second half was starting it just felt like this was this was it i i felt that wednesday just had maybe run their race look spent and i i wish i could tell you that that was um just an illogical illogical thought pattern yeah well we know i think with our old aging squad although interestingly wickham have an older had an older team out than us today um our, our our record is pretty good in terms of well we're very good at home but our, our record's not bad in terms of midweek games weekend games but where we really fall down is game is where we have these weeks with three games in a week and uh, um, these Saturday Tuesday Saturday weeks are the ones we've not had that many of them but our win percentage I, I'd be interested to see what it comes to now because we've got another loss on our record but our our win percentage is only twenty two percent when we play Saturday Tuesday. Saturday. Um, I don't know how whether that will affect the last game of the season as well. That's a yeah, big question. yeah, but we're, we're obviously playing on a Sunday, right? So there's a bit more. So maybe that extra day makes all the difference. Extra day, and I, I don't know. I, I'm really going to be curious what happens midweek. But I know I'm jumping ahead of ourselves now because I know we just I, there's such a collective feeling of resignation. Just a so, in this game of football, but b also covering the second half in this game of football. Let's be honest. So I think. Just another little halftime note before we launch into this uh, this doomed second half. Um, Dunkley, I think, justified by and large, justified his his selection. I think Vokes is a very you know he's a striker with a real pedigree. I think probably someone who, like some of our members of our squad, you'd probably argue is a bit too good for League One on his day. Um, certainly, if he's anywhere near the player he used to be. Uh, League One is is kind of cheating. Um, I don't know that. I don't know how well he's held onto those gifts. But Dunkley did a good job against him. Dunkley, by and large, managed him really well. Um, and I think that's just to be noted because we we have criticised Dunkley in the past. We will criticise Dunkley again. Um, but he he should have been having a, a real first half of it because he got a goal. I think perfectly legitimately. And he'd managed his man without any real scares. That was the weird thing. I mean, like, in terms of personnel, like, I I feel like the choices were maybe were maybe not too bad. Maybe substitutions we can maybe get onto when we come to anyway. Maybe yeah. maybe let's just roll through. Let's just roll through yeah. the second half here. I, I don't have any notes until the fifty fourth. Fiftieth uh, minute. I said Jacobson not getting a yellow. Ridiculous. Oh yeah. Um. 
Let me just give you a little bit of piffiness here. So during this, just getting a little bit frustrated with watching this, I managed to see a billboard advert for Louisiana. Um, that's the bizarrest thing I've seen in a very bizarre week. Just to, just to, to go there, to visit there? Yeah, like from the Louisiana Tourist Board. Like wow. So it, it scrolls through Lafayetteville and a whole bunch of places. If you like lynching, get yourself to Louisiana. <laughs> Which reminds me at the beginning, I must say, like having the the mock cod ACDC with the very American lineup videos on their um on their their television wall yes. that was coming up. It was just it was way too US of A for me. Yeah. So as I said in my earlier notes, which obviously didn't happen, come on Wednesday, stuff these bogus grenade grundle chodes. <laughs> yeah. That and uh, you know James Corden, the very there's a very red, red, white, and chair boys feel to <laughs> red, white, and chodes. Red, white, and chodes. There we go. <laughs> oh, fifty fourth minute. Okay, yeah, I think I'm up to speed with you. Do you want to lead this one? Okay, can do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just to, the, the, I, so I noted that they were having a better spell. I think. Um, I think added to that sense of dread at half time is sort of the feeling that we'd maybe had our better half of the two. We tend to have only one good half per game, and um, maybe we'd we'd had ours already. I think, and that was really fed into by the the first ten minutes or so of this the second half. Um, yeah, they had a nearly moment after a bobbling cross from the left, which kindly sort of lolloped up into Bailey Peacock Farrell's hands instead of being poked home at the near post, which looked like it was going to be what happened. Um, I felt like a real let off. Bailey Peacock Farrell looked very calm and came away with the ball in his hands, but it just felt like um, it was a real sucking in of air um, uh, collectively. Is that the same 54th minute No, you had? <laughs> <laughs> Big gap, while Luke. People can't see that you've raised your eyebrow, Luke. That was completely zoned out. Oh, <laughs> I said at the beginning of this, I was going to try, like have fun and do a good job, and I'm just, I'm so like lethargic <laughs> for this game of football. It was it? It was. I tried. I so tried. So, oh. once we conceded, we we didn't really do anything much did we we did there was no real fight no. so i think that's that's the thing is we're, we're barreling towards we've had done the good bit of this game and we're barreling towards the the, mm. the real last end of things in uh in terms of 50 i i had the point of the gregory cross and putting out for the corner in 55 uh 57 minutes i've got a note here um what did you think do you think that could well have been a penalty rich i think it's a handball yeah it's a handball yeah. Um, what did what did the Wickham commentators think? Um not a huge amount of it. I think they sort of fairly brushed over it. Um I thought I loved that bit that bit of play. It was lots of nice slick quick passing. Uh, mm. I like the Dali Bashiru to Mendes Lang to Luongo to Barahino to Gregory to Johnson. But I, I, I think I know he's close to it. So it's in some ways it feels harsh if you're close to it. But I think it's all about our natural position. And he got I think he saves it with his hand on I think he sticks his hand out on purpose. He does. And he that's does. got to be the defining factor in whether or not it's a it's a handball. He, and he does to bring me his that arm it up. is. He doesn't need to be like he's hunched over uh over his sort of right hip to kind of try and shield the ball, you know, shield the ball. But the ball misses his body entirely. And if his arm is sticking out, you can't actually see from the one angle we get, but it hits clearly hits something and there's no part of his body it could hit. So it hits his arm and it means his arm is sticking out proud of his body. And that should be, should be, it should be a a penalty. It should absolutely should be Um, another really bad bit of refereeing in a game full of it. Yeah. Um, and that was Daryl Horgan, I think, that did the... It might have been McCleary. I don't know. Seven, I wrote down 17, but then I see that 17 and 12 were playing similar positions, and I think they are both... Oh, no, it couldn't have been McCleary. It 12 is been, McCleary. It would have been it's, Horgan. It it's Horgan. Horgan also looks like a nasty POS as well. Yes. But they had two little, like, tufty, tufty ruffians, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> two little tufty ruffians. 
Tufty Ruffians, Bailey, will you deal with the Tufty Ruffians for us? Yes, Father, I'll see the Tufty Ruffians out. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) So, this is the moment we're we're battling towards, uh, Mm. and we can avoid it no longer. 62nd minute, every single one of the Wednesday centre-backs manages to mess up in one move, and Wickham are now in the lead. Hutch's throw is fine, but it's cut out and passed into into the space he left to take it. Dunkley wholeheartedly goes for and completely misses the header. Hutch doesn't or can't get back to help and fill in the gap. So once again, number 17, Horgan, races into the space. Uh, I'm just double checking now that it was Horgan that played. Yes, yeah. So Horgan races into the space, uh, bearing down on goal. Now, this is a two-on-two situation, and Bailey Peacock Farrell is not just any goalkeeper. He's a good goalkeeper. He's also good in one-on-one situations. So Jordan Story's job here is to mark a beater and let Bailey Peacock Farrell take on the shot. But he doesn't. He gets sucked in, leaves Obita completely unmarked, and so Horgan sucked them both in, cuts the ball across, and Obita hits it into an open net. It's, it's awful. It's awful. All-round all terrible. Yeah. A huge lapse in concentration, um, like a collective brain fart from every single member of the defence. Uh, and it's it's a combination of not trusting each other. It's that thing, again, of making one mistake and compounding it by rushing the rest. Um, but all, the, the, the end result is that we just hand them a just ridiculously easy goal. Yeah. Uh, all they had to do was clear a throw in rather than just do the, the thing that we were expecting them to do of kind of bring it down and that, and that broke everything any uh thoughts any additions no no very poor goal to concede and really only kind of one of the real moments of uh quality or the only kind of real yeah. chance for, for Wickham as well yeah but we've it, it is that that situation i i i, I think as I say, they are all at fault in different ways. But the unforgivable bit is story absolutely shouldn't come across to try and deal with Horgan. There's no need for him to get involved with that, especially knowing we've had games recently where Bailey Peacock Farrell's gone one on one with a player with the ball at their feet and come away with the ball. He's good at that. Hmm. He's good at penalties. He's good at one on one situations. Trust your goalkeeper to deal with it. And make use of you as the extra man. Don't go two on one. Ah, so annoying. Ah, oh, but it's all right, Luke, because we bring on Shadipo for Berahino, and then the whole game turns around because you know Shadipo, he's good at football and that, isn't he? What a stupid substitution. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just really disappointed with. Uh, it's shoddy. It's shoddy. It's, we've it's, we've it's got the whole season to this point, and. We're still hoping that it's any good, really. Uh, but only, only... I don't even think Shadipo believes he's as good as Darren Moore thinks he might be. Hmm. <laughs> and he came off for Berahino, right? For Berahino. Uh, Canberry would have been the better substitution? Possibly. I just... I don't know what the hope was, because Shadipo... So Berahino spent... Who's a proper striker, that's his job has spent all game getting absolutely no change because they're a big they're a big they're, they're big lumpy center backs that's what they do mm. but Berahino's got nowhere and what we decide to do is bring on someone that's got no kind of natural ability at being a front man so he's got no inherent kind of skill there play him up top and expect him to like back into defenders and turn them around and stuff when he's never shown any aptitude for it previously he's a winger He's a winger who cuts in sometimes. He's not. A, he's now a centre forward. Never been a centre forward. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. I'd, I'd like the referee to explain why Dunkley Dunkley's goal was disallowed. I'd like Darren Moore to explain why he thought what he thought would happen with Shadipo coming on. What did he think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, so I thought Dunkley again might have had a shout for a penalty in their box. I thought he uh, seventy first minute. Oh, the um, man. yeah. When when he when he he sort of volleyed it over, but again, the, their player was all over him. Um, I think in both cases as well, the sort of telling thing is 
the defender's first look is at the defend is at the referee. Both times he bundles Dunkley over and he like looks longingly at the referee, like please don't, you know, please don't give a penalty. Um, so that's seventy first minute, seventy seventh minute. Dunkley gets agonizingly close to spinning a straw set piece from Bannon into a golden goal as he sends a header just wide, despite Bannon essentially chipping it straight <laughs> to Stockdale. Dunkley just like murdered Stockdale to try and get a header away. It was really lovely to see his desire in that moment. I loved, I loved it because he, he dived and then he kind of like, it had a moment where somehow he changed direction yeah, and was falling yes. backwards. Yeah. Like to, and then to fall backwards on your, on your, like towards your back and then get your head to it to get a, a nod on from there. Like, it's wonderful. It's wonderfully shit, but it's it's really fun to see. Like a, like some sort of Cirque du Soleil uh, set piece. Cirque du Donclay. <laughs> Cirque du Donclay. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was balletic. Uh, it was a balletic, nearly nearly moment of a header. <laughs> um, Eighty first minute, Hutch gets a yellow card for doing a Hutch on McCleary. Um, the Radio Sheffield, we had Rob, uh, Rob Staten and, uh, and John Pearson again. R- Rob uh, was uh, almost getting apoplectic yeah. at the level of time-wasting that we yeah. were doing. You know, at the first time, they started calling them, you know, the, the uh, Gareth Ainsworth Dark Arts. <laughs> what I was doing. Um, but he was off. It was, it was almost like watching, a, when, like listening to a, a professional trying to be it was almost like this a West Wednesday fan, I'm going to be honest. Yes, yeah. Very funny, <laughs> trying to... Probably background-wise, Rob Stain is a Wednesday fan, but uh, anyway. Um, he was getting very, very annoyed at the anti-football. He is, he's yeah. very, very upset at the the level of players going down, going off the pitch, getting a bit of treatment, having a bit of water, coming back on with a thumbs up. I do think it's extraordinary in this league. I do think there's... I think the poor officiating has just led to a kind of brazen, outlandish time wasting <laughs> that mm. I, gen- I genuinely don't think I've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. Like they t- Because the refs don't have any control over the game, they have no consistency in their decisions, they let so much go. I mean, I was amazed that the crew there was a crew player booked in the first half for, for time wasting. Um, that, was, that was sort of amazing that that had happened but there's been games where that should have happened previously uh where people were just yeah just yeah, had no intention to kind of keep the game rolling in any any true sense uh, but the ref the only in, the only interventions they make seem to help the team that's wanting to time waste oh you're time wasting are you well i'm going to come across and tell you that you really shouldn't time waste by the way and if you're going to take that free kick you should really take it from exactly the space where I've told you to. No, not there. No, there. No, not there. There. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, so their 30 seconds of time wasting has now been turned into a minute and a half kind of tally novella by you, you absolute twerp. And you're not gonna t- not gonna book them. You're not gonna add it on the end. <laughs> and then when they they suddenly want the time to disappear, it will disappear because you're useless. Mm. Oh, uh, and we did have one moment of magic from Bannon. I think Bannon had one of his lesser games, uh, although mm. to be fair to him, he's having the sort of season where even a lesser game is pretty good by most people's standards. But he produced an absolutely gorgeous cross on the 85th minute for Patterson. Patterson is, I, if you've not seen it, folks, I, it's hard to describe how easy this looked as a chance. He's within, he's on his, standing on his, with his feet on the ground, he's not having to jump. The ball is within the frame of the goal, kind of. All he needs to do is just somehow propel it directly forward or down and forward, and it's a goal. And somehow he clears it off the goal line, up and over the top of the the goal. His header, this 50p head doesn't even come into it. This is like dodecahedron head to Mm. find this exquisite angle for the perfect clearance when literally 99% of the contacts with your your being your uh, corporal corporal being would have sent this into the goal mm-hmm. uh unbelievable uh miss by by Callum Patterson and he's a man who 
has some real misses to his name, but it, I, I'm struggling to remember one quite so extraordinary as this. It's pretty bad, isn't it? And it just a summary of the game, the summary of the way Wednesday had gone about that second half. Yep. Um, Patterson, by the way, who'd come on for Delhi Bashiru, who was one of our only actual good like attacking players for most of the game. So another bad substitution in a way, because I don't know why Delhi Bashiru came off. And literally just before he was taken off, he'd done our probably our best bit of play in the whole second half where he sort of turned his man and drove forward, won as a free kick on the edge of their box. But anyway, that's another thing. It's mm. just uh... <laughs> uh yeah. So anything else between then and the end of the game? Uh, just before that, I want to say Hutch gets a yellow for a late foot and McCleary holds his face despite it being his leg, you know, in true <laughs> awful time-wasting fashion. Yeah. And you know, Mr. McCleary, you know, if you wore shin pads, then it wouldn't hurt as much. Mm. Can we outlaw players not wearing shin pads? I fucking hate cocky wingers who are... Well, they've got mm-hmm. to wear them. Oh, they've, got little, like, they've got little kids' ones on, haven't they? They don't really had anything on. You've got to have them on, so it must have something, but it'll be, <laughs> it'll be like that big... Riches. I'm making bitching. a gesture the size of uh, of a man's penis with my finger and thumb. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Rob Staten declares this one to be high drama. Maybe if Morse is high drama, and I'm ten years old, and I'm finding it especially grim. And and then and then Grimmer comes on after I've made that note, which has cut a nice little <laughs> bit of uh, cosmetic, cosmetic, beautiful nature. Um, Nick Grimmer, the Radio 1 DJ. That was the one, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I love Harry Styles. Ooh. Ooh, it's mad getting pissed and that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's Grimmer. It's Grimmer. Which made me wonder, you know how there's like the, the beautiful, wonderful things for, for children who identify as uh, queer or homosexual, gr- gr- or lesbian growing up, and the, you know, it gets better. Um mm. Maybe I need to do one for kids, for kids of all ages, and just tell them how bad it is being a Wednesday fan. It gets grimmer. <laughs> it gets grimmer. It gets grimmer. We can get grimmer, we get grimmer. Life gets grimmer. My my final note is the 89th minute. Um, we got seven minutes of stoppage time, which obviously nothing happened. Absolutely nothing. It was incredible how little... There was no, there was no impetus for anything. Just there, uh, which is just a general commentary. But um, the one thing I do want to know is, is the 89th minute, you know, Akin Fenwa came on as one of the many substitutions for Wickham. Yes. And Story clears one for a corner beating Akin Fenwa. Akin Fenwa looked like he's ruptured something walking off. <laughs> he's a very, very broken man. Yes. Like, as, as well as someone could be broken who spends, I don't know, four hours in the gym every day or something ridiculous. <laughs> Like, very much clearly, like, there is this hilarious, laddish, FIFA 99 strength bounce surrounding Akin Fenwa, but really genuinely a great advertisement for football players should not be living in a gym, basically. No. You know, any... He's a ludicrously shaped human being, isn't he? He's a very, very bizarrely shaped human being, and hilariously he scored the other day, which... I don't know. Could well be one of the many things that, hey, after this, you know, we had some good results the other day. All the results today were pretty bad, basically. The only thing yeah, that was minor good was Plymouth drawing with Wigan, but that still gives them a point to be above Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. This was this was the opposite of the day when everything went nice for us, everything went bad for us. Um, we still have it in our own hands. That's the main, that's the kind of the silver lining of this is that uh, no matter how much of a horse's ass we made of today, we still have uh, we still have it within our powers to get into those playoff places. We just uh, I, so part of me to an extent, <laughs> this is a weird thing to say, but part of me is a little bit. I have I have worried about being the team that just lands in third, and you've kind of had. There's a there is a bit of a hangover to to being the nearly men who fin- finish in third. I think, although I know statistically, pretty much every position is just as likely to win the playoffs. I think when you look at it, it's it's almost entirely like twenty five percent, twenty five percent, twenty five percent, or maybe even slightly favours the teams in third and fourth. But 
I just mm. can't help shape the feeling that there is like Brighton when we were we went to Wembley. Um, there's a bit of a there's a there's an effect to mm. spending the whole season chasing automatics and just missing out at the last moment. And now we will we're spared that ignominy because we missed out two weeks early. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'm very very apprehensive going into oh. this this week. It's um, I don't feel like we do very well under pressure. Well, we've got a Fleetwood team midweek who are fighting for their lives. Yep. Yes, they are. Um, they're still very much in the mix at the bottom of the table there. Mm. Um, pretty much a win there would, would would see them safe, I think, pretty more or less. Mm. Um, they'd still be technically uh, relegatable on, on goal difference, but it would see, see them a long way to being being uh, being in this division next season. So so they're not they're a team with something to play for. But to be honest, that's probably better for us than a team that's just going to sit back and make us play around them and break them down. Uh, if Fleet would actually try and duke it out with us, that tends to be the games where we play a bit better. You, yeah, you'd say that, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This is this feels like a huge. This is a very very huge loss, especially when I felt at a certain point in this game. Here's a question: Did we play for a draw at a certain point? Did we think a point is good enough in this, knowing no. that it's it's almost like a promotion six pointer? Because now we've know. brought Wickham kind of back into the kind of promotion picture, top six. I don't think we ever played for a draw. We rattled out. We really tried. We rattled out the blocks. I know, but the second half just seemed to the second half really fell off. Well, we had, but we had, but more shots than them in both halves. We had more possession. It's fifty fifty in first half. We had fifty seven percent of possession. We had, <laughs> we had to, ooh, we had more possession. Ooh. No, but I'm t- I'm just saying, like you can't say we weren't. I, I I don't think at any point we weren't trying. I just think we didn't have the personnel in the pit on the pitch, and certainly didn't mm. once we actually needed to get something out. I, I don't. It's an act of self harm to bring on Shadipo as a striker in this game. Like that is ludicrous. I, I it's unfathomably stupid. <laughs> it, I can't see what it was possibly ever going to add to us. I can I can make an argument for put Mendes Lang up top and put Shadipo on a, in a wing back position, but playing doing a like for like swap. Yeah. Was, was just awful, and he didn't look bothered. He looked timid and weak on the ball. He just offered. He, he, it was less than nothing because when he got the ball, other players would have done better than him. So it was worse than not having a player there to mm-hmm. have him come on and do what he did. Come on, come on and lay such a specific turd-like egg uh, as Shadipo laid uh, was 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 worse than not playing at all. Um, and I can't think much of more of an insult than it would have been better if you didn't turn up today, Olamide. It would have been much better if you'd stayed at home. Um, mm. <laughs> but we, yeah, I don't know. We supposedly we had three big chances to their one chance in the in the second half. I'm just looking. All the stats are that we gave it a go. It wasn't a very good go, but it didn't amount to much. That's the. I, I don't. I don't think. I didn't ever feel like we were playing for for the draw. To be honest, but. We can agree to disagree. That's all right. That's fine. I just there seemed a, a real lack of momentum in that second half. And I even think being we behind. To win. I think this team wanted to win. I think when you hear see Bannon, seeing the reaction when the scores were coming in on Tuesday, I don't think any. I think everybody thought and wanted to go for automatic promotion, but they've let themselves down well and truly. This was not good enough today. Because hmm. um, I don't think it was a very good Wickham performance by and large. No, well, they're just a bunch of shit houses, basically. They're a bunch yeah. of nasty anti-football shit houses, and I don't know. We'll see what happens, but that might be better than what Wednesday have. I mean, we'll put it this way: I mean, the team who scored the most goals in the league. Granted, there's still more football to be played, but Oxford United scored 81 goals this season. Rich, mm. they've they've missed out on the playoffs, which is rather exceptional. To be honest with you, well, everybody's going to be over eighty points, aren't they? But given some miracle, everybody in the playoffs that's, will be over eighty. That's points. insane. Somebody on our yeah. said it's going to, you know, l- lamenting just how how crap the championship is and the the shit tide mark of quality to get into the championship playoffs. Let me check on it right now. The pigs are on sixty nine points. 
yeah. with two games left to play, that's a much lower watermark than it's going to be like 82 points at least to get oh, into yeah. the playoffs. Yeah. It's insane. It is. No, it's it's funny how how uh, stark the uh, the difference in quality is really between mm. in the two leagues. But you've got to us. We'd count ourselves in that in that number. I think probably, well, in recent history, Bolton are in that number. Um, but yeah, Wigan, maybe Rotherham had a push. Uh, Sunderland and ourselves, they're all teams that would expect to be Championship as at lowest, really. Mm. If you if you're looking at kind of history, fan base, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, there's sev- there's probably teams beyond that, that that would want to be in that conversation themselves. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we when we lose, we tend to pick out a villain of the piece. So uh, this could be interesting. Uh, do you do you have a steer? <laughs> I know who your villain of the piece is. Piece is, piece is rich. I don't. Well, I'm not. I'm. I'm open-minded. <laughs> we can't pick Darren Moore, so it would be Darren Moore. Um, I actually weirdly had some sympathy for Darren Moore up to the substitutions. That's the thing. I, you I, know, think I, it, I thought it was a team selection. Or what? Sorry, go on. Yeah, if it was a decent team selection. I thought, like, largely he got it right today. Um, who do I think was bad today? I don't know. I'm finding it difficult because I'm finding that you're generally leading me in this kind of direction. Do you, some, um, uh, do you like little scores given to human beings for their work, like six point such and such, seven point whatever? Do you want? Do, do you sure, like to have, let's let's do uh, that. Let's kind of bring that into the frame. Go on. So there's a there's a lot of orange in this Wednesday team. Uh, you've got what is orange? Oh well, green is green is good. Red would be terrible. I associate orange with nice things, like oranges oh. themselves, like the warm glow of a cartoon Kiora sun. Perhaps. <laughs> Beautiful. But then it is too orangey for crows. So. It is too orangey for crows, but not too orangey for Luke's. Oh, Luke's in their leathers. Get me that Kiora in my veins. <laughs> but not anymore, because I take it Kiora, they've done the awful sugar thing, right? So it's like, you, oh, you can't have this being sugary. You've got to have it half sugar, and you've got to cut it with awful sweeteners. I don't know so much if sugar was the... Uh the damaging move or the additives. I think that, I think there's a big, the additive sea change, the, uh, the E number Nazis really denied us a lot of tasty things. They did. That's, off. That's the real crime in, in this world. Mm. Cause some people convinced themselves that their toddlers became over hyper, hyperactive when they had blue smiles. Oh, now you're not allowed E, my, my, my. but it's tasty just don't give it to your children if they go weird with it let me i'm a grown man and i want to invite <laughs> this product let me do it make one for children if you have to make a child's umbongo i want the tasty one with the bad things in it <laughs> i'm a grown man let me enjoy my childhood drink <laughs> let me have my grown-up umbongo um, yes, like my father and his father before him. I want to sit and sip my umbongo. You know how Harry Potter has rebranded uh, covers, some for kids and some for adults. Well, <laughs> give me the classy adult black and white train umbongo. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, get that um, prison, get that umbongo out of Azkaban prison and get it in my belly. <laughs> Anyway, go on. So orange is bad in terms of ratings. Orange is bad. Uh, so, uh, so supposedly they're they're giving they're giving Marvin Johnson a six point two as our lowest score, the lowest scorer on the pitch. Really? Uh, well, yeah. So Callum Patterson and Johnson both get six point twos. Shadipo, Mendes, Lang both come up with six point threes. Uh, Luongo and Dunkley come out with six point fours. Um, it, it's a shame it's not a visual medium in this podcast because you get to see a real got to see a real vein on Rich's head when he mentioned Sh- Shadipo <laughs> as a six point three. <laughs> Channeling Dominic Raab and his terrifying fit to burst uh, forehead, uh, like uh, like Jonah Jameson in Spider Man taking a big yeah. dump. 
That's what it was. <laughs> a big dumb whilst reading enraging headlines. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah J- Jordan Story and Saido Berhino both get, edge into the yellow with 6.5 Deli Bashiru 6.8 and Gregory uh, Bailey Pickoff Farrell 6.9 Gregory gets a 7 Hutch gets a 7.1 and Ooh. Bannon gets an 8 Bannon gets an 8 wow that's generous um, yeah it's probably it's probably Shadipo I can't think of anyone else who was pretty bad outside of that um, go ahead, go. I Berahino was a bit ineffective, as was Gregory. Yeah, but they they had a rough time today. They just got absolutely nothing out of the ref again. Yeah, and yeah, sad times. So yeah, I was interesting because I thought when you said like, "Oh, I know who you want it to be," were you were you meaning Shadipo at that point? Show Hippo at that point. Yeah. Uh, see, yes. I thought you were going to say Jordan Story. Yas yeah. Yas Queen Ridge. Yas Queen. <laughs> Go off. Um, I, so I, th- I think more for me, it's more, it's more of a toss up between Dunkley and Story. But I feel sorry for Dunkley because I think he should have had a, two penalties and a goal and or a goal. <laughs> so I'm going to maybe I, my personal pick for a villain of the piece is Jordan Story because I think he should have just trusted trusted Bailey to do his thing. Trust, trust Bailey. Get out. In Bailey, we trust. I, he has never let us down, apart from that one game against Ipswich we don't talk about. <laughs> and I always, actually, I scrupulously now, I always check behind me before I do uh, engage in the old kickoff, don't I? I have a little look around, check there's nobody. Oh, mind your, uh, mind your, um, your, your, your six o'clock. I always say to my, say to myself and uh, have a little look behind. And uh, the accent's gone off the rails here. Um, <laughs> and this episode's gone off the rails. Let's let's read it. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's release people to the, mm. uh, the 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 sunny weather we're having here in the UK. I'm sorry, Luke, to rub it in. I know you're a bit of a snowy boy out in Calgs. But um, yeah, any anything else for this? Uh, it may all be over by the time we talk again, or we will be making plans for the playoffs. It's a real knife edge. It really is. It's uh, it's not going to be a fun. It's not going to be a fun Sunday. No, it's the ignominy of. Oh, it's of, a Saturday, though, isn't it? We're playing Saturday. Yeah. It is redonkously early doors, Rich. Yep. You're going to be uh, necking a KSC at seven in the morning to get to the game. <laughs> Do you know uh, the? There's something special about a pre pre noon pre noon uh, battered sausage from the chippy uh, has a special piquancy to it that uh, you just don't get anywhere else. That just feeling your veins fill up with that lovely grease so early in the day, it feels like you've cheated life. <laughs> <laughs> Rich is like. Wakey, wakey, digestive system. It's all coming thick and fast with some <laughs> curry sauce on it. Oh, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> down my hot bum roll. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, yeah. I'll chat. Should we call it a day and we'll chat? Let's call it a day. Let's chat do next that. week. Oh, well, we did it. We got there. We're, um... It's automatics no more, but the playoffs are still very much in our in our grubby little grasp. Um, I'll say cheerio to you, Luke, and cheerio to the folks at home. Look after yourselves, and we'll talk again when it's all you know. The whole regular season is is done. It's in the rearview mirror. It's deflated like a big tire, big depressing <laughs> bite tire. Exactly. <laughs> cheerio, folks. See everyone. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you.